Good evening. I'm Cantor Susan Bortnick from Washington Hebrew Congregation. It is a pleasure to be with you to share a few thoughts and to sing a couple of songs. These weeks at home, while certainly challenging, I have noticed that they have brought wonderful blessings to my life as well and to the life of my family. We have always enjoyed living along the Potomac River right outside of DC. And as spring has bloomed around us, we have noticed that we now have the time to notice the world that teems outside of our windows, the life that exists. Um, we have all stood witness to the multitude of animals that are playing in our yard. We have found new paths to hike along the river and new marshes to explore. And we've also found a few rocks and down trees that we've used to climb over creeks. And of course, just a week and a half ago, we enjoyed gazing outside of our windows at the full moon that hung in the sky. Witnessing and engaging openly and fully in the world around us, appreciating its beauty and giving thanks for its existence animates the divine within each of us. It brings us a greater sense of shlemut of wholeness and allows us to further seek the divine in ourselves and in others, as well as in the world around us. A year or so ago, I came across a new nigun that I have found myself singing often over these past few weeks. A nigun is a wordless melody, and this one happens to bring me peace and wholeness. As I sing it, it reminds me of all the beauty that exists around me. I share it with you now. It was composed by Lisa Silverstein Sewer and it's titled The Sunrise Nigun. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
So for us, soon into the stay-at-home order that we have been living under, prayer found its way into our evening dinner routine. Saying a prayer of gratitude for blessings and for food and for a healthy life, that may seem normal, especially at dinner time, but sadly, I admit that is not the case for us. We are rarely all home at the same time for dinner. But now we're not only all home at the same time and all the time, but we actually are finding ourselves eating dinner early, which actually has afforded a wonderful evening routine that we've created. Um, dinner is often followed by tea time uh, for everyone, even our six-year-old. Um, and along with the tea, we either listen to music together and dance or play games. And it's been a lovely routine that the kids really are enjoying and they ask for it every day. So as we sit down to dinner, our, even our six-year-old has learned to recognize the importance of giving thanks for all of the blessings and the time together and our health, and as well as saying prayers of healing for others. Speaking of prayer, Rabbi Nachman of Bratzlaff once said, every word of one's prayer should be like a rose that is picked from a bush. One gathers rose upon rose until a bouquet of a bouquet is formed and can be offered to God as a beautiful blessing. Sometimes prayer, however, in a casual setting can be difficult or complicated or unusual. It can be hard to find the words we want to say. Often, I have found that if we just commit ourselves to the idea of prayer and we allow our mouths to open, just in preparation, that some kind of utterance will come forth. And eventually, with practice, this utterance will turn into words. And eventually we will find our way to saying the words that it is that, are, that we need to say to God. For centuries, um, our, we have known that praying does not always come naturally or easily. In our prayer service, in fact, there are six words from Psalm 51 that begin our Amidah, which is the standing prayers that are the centerpiece of our worship. Adonai sefatai titach ufi yagid tehilatecha. Adonai, open my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. The authors of our prayer book recognized that sometimes we need help and guidance. And as we look through our prayer book, it is filled with poetry that helps to offer inspiration and guidance for our prayers. There's one poem that is adapted from Abraham Joshua Heschel that I actually remember leading at my bat mitzvah many, many years ago. And it is a prayer that reminds us that, or a poem rather, that reminds us that prayer does not fix the physical things in our world that need fixing but prayer can help us to be whole. A Jewish educator and composer, Jay Rappaport, wrote a beautiful song that combined this poem and the words of Adonai Sifatai Tiptach, and it is titled, Open My Lips. Oh, 
thank you for joining me this evening as we go forward into the days and the weeks ahead. May we live each day seeing the blessings that fill our lives and recognize the fullness of life that surrounds us and exists within us. May we find shlemut, wholeness, and peace that comes with living life with blessing and gratitude. Have a good night.